GOMO is a multi-device uh, authoring tool and the GOMO Learning Suite is a combination of the authoring tool, our award-winning multi-device authoring tool and a brand new product, GOMO Hosting and Analytics. And it's built on the five key pillars that you see on the screen now. I'll talk about all of those in a little bit more detail in a moment. What does GOMO do that makes it different from traditional uh, authoring tools? Well, GOMO creates responsive and adaptive HTML5 content completely automatically. What we mean by this is content that responds and adapts to the browser and the device that you're working on. This allows you to build a course once in GOMO and it will work on any device, desktop, uh, laptop, tablet and smartphone and you don't have to do any additional work when you're authoring to get that multi-device behavior. It's inherent within GOMO. So just to um, illustrate that, if I just um, disconnect this browser session here, we're actually looking at um, a piece of GOMO content on the screen now. I'll just uh, stretch it out a little bit like so. So this is a GOMO uh, course. As I shrink the browser down, the content responds to the changing browser conditions. You can see the images hopefully shrinking down. At the point at which GOMO realizes that the images are too small to view next to each other, it will stack them vertically. And as we shrink the browser down further and further, we're now looking at something that looks a little bit like a smartphone, and our content is still completely usable. You look at the uh, icons along the bottom for the uh, nav bar there. They're currently in icon form. As soon as there's enough space for them to be pure text, GOMO switches them back to be um, pure text. So that's what we mean by responsive and adaptive HTML5 content. If I minimize my screen now, just to um, try and show you that on a different device. Hopefully you can now see my iPad. This is the same presentation. I'm using, you can't see this obviously because you're not in the same room as me, but I'm using swipe gestures here just to navigate through the uh, logos and also to navigate through the content. So it's exactly the same course on my iPad. Really important thing here though is if I turn the device around in my hand, the content adapts and responds completely automatically to the changing browser conditions. It's not that important perhaps on a uh, tablet, but it can be really important on a smartphone. There's a lot of e-learning um, software out there that will take the rectangle that we see now and shrink it down into the top um, third of a smartphone screen. Um, and that really is unusable. The text is too small to read. Um, the buttons are too small to hit, you are basically forced to turn the device around into landscape mode um, to interact with it correctly on a smartphone. With GOMO, we respond and adapt automatically and GOMO fills the screen. It also does that no matter um, what the device type is, you don't have to tell GOMO how big the screen is, you don't have to tell GOMO and that you're designing for uh, an iPhone or an iPad. Uh, if I can get my iPad off the screen, that would be a big help. Come on, you awkward thing. Here we go. You just literally build your courses, and the GOMO player figures everything out for you. So that's responsive and adaptive HTML5 content. Now, GOMO is in the cloud. It's a software as a service application. What this means is there's nothing to download and there's nothing to install. You don't have to involve your IT department to get going with GOMO. You open up your browser, you navigate to the GOMO login page, you log in and you start working. So you can start working straight away, literally within five minutes of signing up for GOMO, you can be working. And because GOMO is in the cloud, it's collaborative. So you can author collaboratively. I'll show you some of the new um, collaborative review features later on during this presentation. And so, looking at this diagram now, to the existing GOMO customers, the uh, dotted line and the area on the right will be new because now on the right-hand side we have the hosting and analytics. So the traditional GOMO was the left-hand side of the diagram where you would work together to build a course, hit the publish button, and out would come a SCORM 1.2 object to go into your LMS. 
we can now publish into GOMO hosting and analytics and we've got lots of interesting ways to distribute GOMO content from the analytics platform and I'll talk about some of those in a moment. Okay, so how do we create content in GOMO? Well, it's incredibly simple. It's a drag and drop interface, very intuitive, all through a web browser, um, no programming language whatsoever. Uh, we just drag and drop and we can now create both SCORM and tin can conformant courses with GOMO. Customization is a really uh, powerful feature in GOMO. You can make your courses look however you want them to look. Uh, you've got loads of customization options to change the look and feel of your courses. Really important thing to note with um, customization in GOMO is that GOMO uses something called themes. Themes control the look and feel of your courses and themes are separate from content. This is really important. What it means is if you've built 100 courses using a particular theme and then your customer decides to rebrand, change their logo, change their color scheme, change their fonts, change their screen background, for example. You don't have to open 100 courses in GOMO and then maybe 100 screens inside the courses uh, to open those up and replace the graphics on every page. You go to the theme, you edit the theme, you save the changes, and all of your courses will see the new look and feel. So really powerful feature and something really important to consider if you're developing hundreds of courses with an authoring tool. GOMO is collaborative, so uh, you can work together uh, wherever you are in the world. Um, we often help our customers out working with them on projects from all over the world. We've got content locking so that two people don't end up op um, updating the same bit of content at the same time. Uh, and now we have some brand new review and workflow capabilities to streamline the production process. I'll show you those in a moment. When you've built your course, you can go down the traditional route of publishing out a SCORM LMS file to, to go into your learning management system, but we now have four new methods of distribution. GOMO Central is our hosting platform. You can give your students instant access to GOMO content. It's got a login page. Students can log in and run GOMO courses. If you have an existing LMS, then you can publish content to your LMS with an LMS wrapper from GOMO. The beauty of this is um, the LMS gets the wrapper. It doesn't get the whole GOMO content. The GOMO content sits in the GOMO servers. This allows you to update your courses in GOMO and your LMS users to see them instantly. And it um, gets rid of all the grief of um, publishing zip files, downloading and uploading courses. You can instantly update courses that are sat in your SCORM LMS. We can provide you with a direct link. Um, so you can send students a direct link to a course, even a QR code. I'll show you that in a moment. Or we've got an HTML wrapper, which will allow you to embed your courses directly into a website. So there are four distribution methods in the new hosting and analytics part of GOMO. And sat behind all of that is our built-in tin can reporting, which will give you a visual way to analyze learner data. Um, now, there'll be a limited set of tin can statements that we'll work with to start with, but this will extend and expand in the future, and you'll be able to write your own tin can statements in the GOMO authoring page. You've then got a full analytics engine sat behind this, so you can uh, analyze who's been in your projects and do far more than you might ever do with SCORM, which has got a limited set of interactions that it can report on. Um, you'll be able to do things like device type, launches, question pass and fail, and a whole range of things that are opened up by the TinCan API. So that's the theory. We'll now have a look at GOMO in practice. So I'm logged in um, to uh, GOMO's uh, staging server. We haven't released this latest version yet, but you're looking at a pre-release beta version. Um, and when you log in now, um, let's use the design, we don't have the screen backgrounds in here now, but when you log in for the first time, you get two items, might be difficult to see on there, but on the left is GOMO authoring, your traditional um, GOMO authoring products, and on the right hand side is the GOMO hosting. If you subscribe to the hosting product, you'll have this new icon here. And if I click onto GOMO authoring, it will take me into the um, learning portal, and this will be reasonably familiar to anybody that's been using GOMO in the past. If you're not a, an existing GOMO user, then basically I'm now logged in through my standard web browser, and these are all the courses that I've got access to inside my particular part of GOMO. 
And we'll start the presentation here. We'll start the demo here now. And I'm going to create um, a brand new project just by clicking on that button on the left-hand side. And this brings up the uh, course creation wizard. So let's give this project um, a name. So we'll call it uh, webinar. What's the date now? 5th of Feb. And the time in the UK is 15.14. I can give it a description uh, if I want to, and I can choose where I'm going to get my resources from. The next stage is then to pick a theme, and this is a theme I talked about in the customization. The theme controls the look and feel of your courses. I'll choose the night sky theme for this particular presentation, but you can see on the screen here um, a big list of themes. I've actually got more themes than most people have here. And this is my developer account, and I've also got access to some of the custom themes, so things like Dunhill, uh, Deloitte, uh, Nike. These are custom themes we've developed for some of our customers. Uh, but there's loads of customization options, so you can create your own themes using standard GOMO uh, functionality. So I've given the course a name. I've given this theme. I'm now going to choose what my students get to see. So I'll give them a menu. Three topics is fine. We'll give them help, uh, glossary, and an exit button. And then the final step is to choose which of my colleagues in my particular GOMO team are going to work on this project with me. And this is where the collaboration starts to come in. So I can choose which members of my team are going to help me um, to build this project. I finish the wizard, and GOMO creates that course live on the e-learning server. And as soon as it's done that, it's available to me uh, to start working on um, as an author, but it's also available to any of my colleagues who have also shared the workload with who could also work in this same collaborative workspace. So this is the course structure. I've got my header and footer navigation. So down at the bottom there, you can see I've got a menu, help, glossary, and exit button. And maybe in the header navigation, I'll have um, a table of contents, top left. And then in the middle there, I'll have uh, a progress bar. I'm in standard issue Chrome here, but I can right click at any point. So if I right click onto topic one, it brings up a context menu, so I can just change the topic settings for topic one. And I might want to call this introduction to GOMO, or whatever I might want to call it. And we'll say that this topic is in development, so my colleagues can see that I'm working on that particular topic. It's in development. And if you can see now, I've actually opened that topic, and it's now locked by me. Uh, and my colleagues would see that I'm busy uh, beavering away, and they can't actually work on this particular topic. Clicking on the topic itself opens up the GOMO authoring interface. This is where you spend most of your time in GOMO when you're creating your courses. Just to explain the screen layout, on the left-hand side is the navigator. This is the list of slides, sorry, screens in this particular topic. We've only got one for now, but we'll add a few more in a moment. Next to that, I've got the assets panel. This is where I can drag and drop my media, my presentation assets, or my quiz assets onto the page. In the middle of the screen is my screen preview. Um, this gives me a very rough preview of how this course is going to look. And on the right-hand side of the uh, screen is my properties panel, and that's dynamic. It changes depending on what I select on the page. If you look at the uh, box I've selected in the middle and look over to the right-hand side, you can see this is set as a two-column layout. So I've got two columns next to each other, and I can have up to four columns in any content block. On a desktop display, it's going to look pretty much like we see here. On a tablet display, again, it'll look pretty much like we see here. Uh, but on a smartphone, GOMO will stack this right-hand block of text below the left-hand one. And that's how we get the multi-device behavior. So if you're holding a smartphone in portrait mode, the text will still be readable, the pictures will still be visible, everything will stack vertically, you'll be able to scroll up and down. And this is how we enable multi-device behavior. So let's do um, a little bit of authoring now. So first of all, I'll just delete that text on the right. For the text box at the top here, I'll just um, put some different text in here. So welcome to GOMO, like so. For the text on this second box, I'll actually just file up the uh, GOMO um, website and grab a little bit of uh, text off the uh, feature tour. 
just to drop into this particular box. So we'll just grab some text like so, copy that, go back to the authoring page and paste that in. And it's pulling the fonts and the colors of the text through from the theme. So this is how we get very nice design consistency in Goma. Um, by using the theme to control the look and feel, we get we don't end up with a page of Times New Roman followed, followed by a page of Ariel, followed by a page of Vedana, and so on. Um, so on the right-hand side of this page now, I think we'll just drop in um, an image, double-click on the image placeholder, and I can have a list or a thumbnail view of my images. I'm just going to drop the Gomo Learning uh, logo in. Um, Oops, my mistake there. New feature here is the ability to edit images within GOMO. So I could stretch that image out a little bit, maybe make it a little bit bigger. And apply that. It's now processed that image, made it bigger, and I've saved a new version. So the ability to edit um, images within the GOMO editor, that's a brand new feature. That will be coming out to our existing customers in the next week or two. Okay, so let's add um, a second screen into this presentation, and I'm going to use the Add Screen from Template feature, and this is a really nice way of building very complex interactive screens incredibly quickly within GOMO. So for this second screen, I'm going to use a hotspot image. Creating that, GOMO automatically creates everything I need for uh, my hotspot image. So let me go and find an image for this page, and we'll make this page all about um, GOMO's offices around the world. So I'm going to drop a world map in. The screen title we'll make as um, our offices. Um, when GOMO made this page for me, it automatically made three subscreens, and this is where I can reveal information when a student clicks on the page. So first subscreen we'll call Brighton, and we'll make this page all about the Brighton office. So I'll just change the text to Brighton like so. And then underneath that Brighton, we'll just drag up an image of Brighton. And I've got a picture of Brighton Pier. There we go. Back to the navigator. The second hotspot reveal we'll call New York. And we'll make this all about the New York office. And again, I'll just drop in um, an image of New York onto this page. Now, I'm being a little bit lazy here and just scrolling through. There we are. There's Natural Liberty, but you can search through the images uh, as well as uh, just um, scrolling down the image list. I'll now double click on the map and set up the interactivity. So hotspot one was for my um, Brighton office. So I'll just drag that over the uh, United Kingdom like so. Hotspot two was for the New York office, so we'll drag that over the States. If I click back onto hotspot one and we look at the set actions, you can see it's automatically set itself to show the Brighton subscreen, but we don't have to do that. We can do lots of interesting things when the student clicks or touches on that page of the course. So for example, we might want to take them to an external web page, maybe the Brighton tourist page. We might want to link to a PDF or a Word document. We might want to link to a completely different screen in the presentation. We might want to change a variety of things like course completion, course score, change an image, set a variable, show a subscreen. So we have lots of nice interactive capabilities to make uh, highly interactive and non-linear courses within GOMO. So that will do me for page two. Let's add another new screen from a template. And on this page, I'm going to talk about our customers. So we'll have a look at uh, our customers, like so. I'll just change the text on the right there. We have customers all over the world. On the right-hand side for this one, instead of having an audio asset, I'll have a um, carousel. Carousel asset lets me do a sort of spinning reveal 
So I'll go and get a variety of images to go in this one. So we'll have the Dunhill image there. In the second step, we'll have um, JP Morgan, I think. There they are. And for the third one, we'll have Nike. Like so. And again, I can just, for completeness, put in the titles. So Dunhill. J.P. Morgan and Nike. And we'll apply that. So there's my uh, third page in this presentation. I'll create one more page, or screen, sorry, and then we'll go and start having a look at what we've done. So for the final screen in this particular demo today, I'll just do a very basic multiple choice question. And the screen title can be the questions them, which will be uh, where is our oops, head office. I've got uh, three answers set up here. So option one can be London. That's going to be incorrect. Option two can be Brighton, which we'll set as the correct answer. And option three can be New York. And then for the feedback, so New York's going to be incorrect. Uh, Brighton is going to be correct. And London can be incorrect as well. And we can give personalized feedback on every single page, so every single answer, sorry. And we'll just drop an image on that side just to make it uh, a little bit more pleasant to look at. So I've now built four pages of that course. We'll now save those changes in GOMO and then we'll go and have a look at some of the capabilities of uh, GOMO for previewing content. So that topic is now saved. If I go back to the GOMO learning portal, uh, we can preview this course. I'm actually going to share it first of all just to show you some new functionality in a moment. So let's now preview this project. One of the really nice features of GOMO is the ability to preview your courses across any device in any orientation um, without having to publish the course out to the devices. So the GOMO previewer allows me to preview this course that I've just built uh, across all my devices. So there's the first page. Welcome to GOMO. It's all looking very good, just as I expected. Page two was the Our Offices page. Click on Brighton, or the UK. We see the Brighton reveal. Click on New York, and we get the Statue of Liberty. Page three was the uh, Customers page, with uh, three of our customers in our um, carousel asset. And finally, page four, where is our head office? There's the quiz. Click on Brighton and confirm, and we get the correct feedback. So I've just been playing around with that course. Everything looks like it's working as I expected. However, we're on um, looking at this in desktop. Well, the GOMO Previewer lets me have a look on tablet. So how is this course going to look on um, an iPad? Uh, there's the contents. So let's go to topic one. Everything's looking very nice, all as expected. Let's go back to the main menu, and then we'll have a look at this on a smartphone. So now, I think it's topic one. And you can now see that GOMO is stacking the items uh, vertically. I've got scroll. So on a smartphone, the text is still readable, and the icons um, and the images are still visible. And I can test all of the functionality now on my smartphone. And again, there's the carousel, all working beautifully. Everyone can see the logo still. And there's the final quiz. And I'll say New York and confirm that one. And of course, New York's incorrect. I'm testing this in portrait mode because this is you know, the way most people hold their mobile phones. This is how I, I would expect students to consume this course. But we can you know, also have a look in landscape and just see how that course will look if they turn their phone on its side. And again, tablet 
in landscape and portrait. Now, that's a really fabulous way to test your courses across all devices. Um, and it's 1514, it's now 1529. I've been talking quite a bit here, but that's taken us uh, 15 minutes or so to, to build that course. And we're now testing it across multiple devices. New capability in GOMO um, 3.0 is the ability to share your project via QR code. So here's where technology will um, eat itself, I think, if this all works. OK, so you can now see my iPad on the screen. I will just drag my iPad over here. I'm going to fire up my QR code reader on my iPad. Um, Here's the office, so you can see what I'm seeing on my computer here in sunny Brighton. Let me zoom in on the QR code. And now the course that I've been testing in GOMO is now on my iPad. And that's a really great way to instantly test um, how your projects are going to work on all of your devices. And now just to prove it's not all smoke and mirrors, it's the webinar, 5th of Feb. 1514, and you can see that course I've created is now on my iPad. So if you want to do some final testing of your uh, content on your devices, you can now just point your QR code reader at the, uh, at the image, and GOMO will uh, automatically transfer the course to your device. So really nice uh, new bit of functionality there in the next release of GOMO. You can, of course, share the course via a, a link as well, and that's always been there, but the QR code is, is brand new. For those of you who are familiar and existing GOMO users, you may have spotted something on the top left of the screen there called Tasks. This is brand new, and this really makes the reviewer um, functionality of GOMO considerably uh, enhanced over what we had previously. And this allows me to review courses and uh, assign tasks. So the reviewer role really gains significant new capabilities. So, for example, I might get to this page and think, actually, we need, uh, we need to add in Burberry or one of our other customers in here. So I can just click on the task panel and add a new task, type a description. So I'll say, please add the Burberry logo. It's topic one. It knows where we are. It's the screen temp audio right. I should probably give that screen a better name, but it knows the screen. And who's going to do that task? Well, I know Hugh's twiddling his thumbs at the moment, so we'll uh, give that to Hugh. And now there's a task that's, event that's ready for Hugh in his task list um, to go and work on. Um, if I hit the preview button for that task, it will take me to the appropriate page so that I can then see it. And if I'm Hugh and I've made some changes to it, then I'll say, well, actually, I've started that one now, Mike. So I'll update that task. And then we can review all of the started tasks, completed tasks, signed off tasks, and so on. So a really nice capability. You can share your courses with your team, with your customers, invite them in to review, and they can review directly into GOMO. No more huge uh, emails, no more email trails, no more spreadsheets review directly into the course itself. So fabulous new feature coming in the next version of GOMO. Okay, let's go just back to the portal and have a quick look at um, customization. I mentioned at the beginning that um, GOMO comes with themes. Themes control the look and feel of courses, and themes are completely separate from um, content. So you can rebrand courses in an instant. So I've got the night sky theme selected for this particular course I've just been building, but I can pick any of the ones that you see on the screen now. However, if I'm reasonably happy with night sky, I just want to make some changes to it. I can tweak the theme, make some changes, and change the look and feel of the course instantly. Um, if I was doing this properly in the theme editor, I could then um, make all courses that use this theme uh, reflect these changes. But I'll just do a quick one for today's demo. 
Um, you can see here, this is the only time we specify size in GOMO. I'm going to say that course was set to show to fill 100% of the browser, but if I know my desktop estate is 1024 pixels wide, I can limit the width of that course to 1024 pixels. We've got some primary colors for that course, um, so I might choose to change those, and I'm currently uh, just using the color pickers on the screen. If you know the hex file used, you can type those in, of course. Further down here, the default background for that screen is the uh, night stars. That's the uh, image we were seeing across every single page. You're able to overwrite the default background on a page-by-page -page basis. So you might use a particular background for 90% of the screens and then perhaps substitute um, a different one for a couple of screens where you want something else. But if I scroll down here, um, let's say we'll have that one as the new background. Further down here, I can control things like the color of the content areas, the opacity, and so forth. I could update fonts, colors, sizes, and so on. And again, this is how we can ensure some really nice design consistency um, by uh, using themes to control the look and feel of our courses. So if you're an organization that's investing in GOMO, uh, you can set up your preferred themes and make those the, the only things that your SMEs or users can use, and all your courses are going to be on brand, on look and feel, and on style. So I'm previewing that course now, and you can see it's now 1024 pixels wide, so it sits in the middle of the page rather than filling the browser. And as I navigate through, um, we'll see some of those color changes coming through into that page there. And if I just go back and show you my iPad, there it is, webinar 5th of Feb 1514, and you can see that one's been um, rebranded based on the new theme settings. So instantaneous updating um, on all devices. Okay, so that really finishes showing you the uh, GOMO authoring and some of the new features that are coming in there. There are additional new features as well. I don't have time today to show you all of those. We will put release notes out when the new version releases so that you'll be able to see all of the uh, new features that are coming in. Um, but what else can we show you? Well, when you're in GOMO now, you've got a whole raft of new publishing options. And if I just go back to the project structure, and if I decide to publish this project out of GOMO, um, you've got your traditional download and distribute via your traditional mechanism, your SCORM LMS, or you can distribute your content through the GOMO hosting platform. Um, I'll publish this as a final version, and call it version 2. Now, this may change in the final release version, but I can choose at this stage my hosting distribution methods. Am I going to go through um, GOMO Central, my access point? Do I want to put an LMS wrap around this and send it to my target LMS? Do I want to put an HTML wrap around this course um, so that we can drop it into a website? Or do I want direct access, which is a link or a QR code? How am I going to track this course? By a SCORM, by a tin can, or uh, no tracking required? and hit the Publish button. I won't publish this one for now because it takes a couple of minutes, so we'll just go over to the hosting portal so you can see what this looks like. Here's the hosting portal. This is where your um, courses will sit when you publish them into GOMO hosting, and the little uh, flash of electricity indicates that those courses are live. Um, I'm logged in as myself. I'll single sign on to both products, assuming you are the administrator for both of those and I can drill down into any of these projects and start thinking about distributing them or having a look if they're already distributed to see how they're going. So here's my NASA course, and I can see the last page views, the latest completions. We can uh, see how many launches we've had, completion status. We can analyze things like device type that people have uh, launched this product from. If I drill down into the analytics, latest project accesses, uh, latest interactions, and if I look at the settings panel here, is this project live or not? 
Uh, it's going through access point. Do I want to give direct access? If I do, um, there's the web address that I can share uh, with my students if I'm going to send it to them um, via email. And if I just go back to my GoMo dashboard, record store is where all of the uh, records are stored. This is coming from our learning record system, LRS. I'm drilling down into Fred. Here, how many projects he's accessed, total launches, total time, recent projects that he's accessed, and then further drill down on if I want to do it by project, for example, like so. I'm just going back to the home page. Sorry, I can configure access points. This is where we can configure the look and feel of your GOMO hosting portal. So you can control things like the site title, whether you've got a, a logo on there, an icon, are you going to require students to log in, or are you going to allow user registration. Uh, we will have a direct link from this one here, but I'll just copy that link. This is what students will see if they were logging into this particular instance of GOMO Central. And there it is, and I'm going to log in as Fred. Things like self-registration can be switched on and off. And there it is, that's Fred's view of the world. So as a student, Fred can just log in and launch his courses. The administrator clearly sees all of the hosting and analytics data that sits behind and controls things like course and project access. And there's Fred now running his uh, NASA Image Gallery course like so. Okay, so that covers most of what we plan to show for today. The last thing I will show you um, is the pricing uh, side of things. So that question usually gets asked at this point. Um, this is the UK pricing, so if you're, we hope we've made it as affordable as possible. Uh, if it's just you, then uh, GOMO is available for £49 a month or 490 per annum, so you get 12 months for the price of 10 if you sign up for the year. Small team is the most popular package we have, £148 a month or 1480 per year. Both of these give you unlimited projects. Small team, uh, you get four user logins. Uh, personal plan is a single user. And we've got a lot of people on personal plans, small e-learning companies, uh, one-man development, so one-person development shops, creating e-learning courses. With the hosting analytics, you now get the ability to distribute those as well through GOMO. Um, you get your storage. Team collaboration comes in in small team because that's a collaborative package and the same support. And then Enterprise um, is a talk to me, Hugh, or any of the GOMO team if you need more users, unlimited projects, uh, telephone support, training, custom theme, and some of the additional services. I know we've got quite a few people on from the uh, United States today, so I'll just flick over to the uh, dollar pricing just so you can see what that looks like in the US. And I think we also have... Uh, few people coming in from France I saw this morning, so in Euros, that's how those prices uh, work out. We don't have the um, hosting analytics pricing on the website just yet. We're still working through exactly how that's going to work, but the pricing will follow the same sorts of figures that you're seeing on the screen here. So there will be an $89 per month price. There will be a $249 per month. So we're going to try and make the pricing at the same sort of level as of affordability um, as for the um, authoring. So um, I apologize, we're not quite there yet because we're still just working out exactly where the price point is going to come in, but it's going to be of a very similar nature, uh, and that will be up there when the product launches, which should be within the next two weeks. 